What's going on, everybody? Been a few days since I talked to y'all last. And I was gonna do a little video on something here that I have a little experience with. And my side of the family has always had experiences with, and it's it's about uh, warnings, as my mother used to call them, or omens, prophecy, stuff like that right there. That for some reason a lot of people in the around this area seems to be familiar with that stuff and uh i don't know if it's just living in this area for so long you know your family roots i, I don't know what it is about it but people who's had generations and generations here seem to have i don't know i don't want to call them powers or anything like that it's just they're very unique but uh I'll get this, I'll give you an example. I'll get this ball rolling. My mother, she uh, she lost her legs to diabetes in uh, 1986. And before uh, before that, <clears throat> she had an uncle. His name was Uncle Joe. And he had lost his legs to diabetes too. Now he's quite older than she was. And she also had a couple of sisters who struggled with this too. But Uncle Joe, he had his legs removed, and uh, we'd go visit him. And he, uh, when he used his wheelchair, of course, I never did notice this. I, I didn't pay attention. I was too young. I was young when he died. But my mother said that his wheelchair <clears throat> had this creak in it when you would go up and down the, the to the kitchen or wherever, you know, that it just had this continuous creak in the wheel that would come along. Well, before the doctor ever diagnosed her with diabetes, she claimed that she would hear that screech of that wheelchair going up and down the hallway of our house. Of course, I was young, but I remember her talking to her sister and saying that she could hear Uncle Joe's wheelchair screeching, going up and down the hallway of our home. And that she viewed this as a warning as an omen well lo and behold six months later you know she still kept hearing this but uh, she goes to the doctor and, and she's got diabetes and a couple of years go by and she use, loses one leg a few more years go by and she loses the other and she swore up until she died that she would hear my uncle or her uncle Joe's wheelchair up and down up and down the hallway all night long and it unnerved her so that's the kind of warnings and stuff that my family have always sort of been privy to and it's affected me i've had it happen to me a couple of times uh, I, so much of this to talk about i could make two videos actually out of all this if i wanted to but I'm not I don't have a script here to go by I don't have anything wrote down or anything like that how how we're going to go I just kind of went for a little walk wound up here and thought I'd <clears throat> talk to y'all for a little bit but uh another another warning this is my grandmother uh it's my mom's mother on the same side she uh back in the 50s her husband I don't know if it was a heart attack or a stroke, what exactly it was medically, but uh, in the middle of the night, she had set out on the old gravel road <clears throat> to go get the local doctor. And by the time she got where she was going to his house and they loaded up and what I was told was an old Model T and they was on their way back to, uh, to give him some attention and she says they come around the curve and there he stood at the side of the road and that he was waving at her well by the time she got the doctor to slow the vehicle down and they backed up there was no one there now i'm thinking the doctor didn't see this himself but uh they put it in reverse and there's nobody there's nobody standing there but she swore to her dying day it was him and she told the doctor that it, he had already passed, that they were too late, that he is he was dead. And that was his way of telling her goodbye. And when they got there, 
he was dead sure enough and this kind of stuff has happened with my family and, and not just my family a lot of families who have grown up around here for many generations you know people who move in here for a couple two or three generations you know doesn't seem to have this effect but if, if your family's been here forever as mine has you seem to you seem to have some connection with these mountains and these hills it's very unexplainable the weirdness that goes on speaking of a warning the one that I can remember happening to me and my mother she was on her way to a doctor's appointment she had just found out that she had diabetes and I was riding with her and uh, we just got onto what's called Park Road here it's on Google Maps if you want to look at it but we're going down Park Road and we can hear something sounds like it's in the car with us and it sounds like a cross between a cat that's hurting that's in pain or a cow bawling I mean it's just it's not real clear what this voice or this moaning is that we can hear it was sort of a two-syllable ah, kind of, I mean that's sounds crazy I know but that's what we was hearing and it seemed to be uh, sound like a female so I thought that the that there was a cat maybe got in the car in the back seat so I look back there and we're going down the road and, and no can't find nothing and the sound is not getting any louder and it's not getting any further away I roll the window down and uh, I stick my head out and I can hear it on the outside of the vehicle just as well as I can hear it on the inside and it kind of spooked me you know I was like mom I, you know it's outside too I can hear it out here you know with all the wind noise and everything just as clear and uh about that time she grabs me by the leg and yells get in the car get in the car and i slide back through the window i was sitting with my butt up on the door and my my arms on the roof of the car and i got back in just in time to see a car coming in our lane i mean right straight for us and uh, she whips it in the ditch and we go up on our side in that ditch and clean that ditch out Golly, I, it's hard. 100 foot, maybe, maybe a little more. We come to a stop and got out of the car. And of course, I'd have forgot about hearing that noise or any of that. You know, I, I, that hadn't come to me. After we saw that everybody was all right and everything got settled down, my mom said that was a warning. She said that it was saying, don't go. That was the, that's what it was saying. Uh, I can't say that I actually heard, heard that it said that, but it, yeah that it, that could have been you could make that out from it very easily so that really really gave me an eerie feeling because it backed up a lot of stuff that my my grandparents and my mom's i had a lot of aunts and uncles on that side that they had said and told a lot of a lot of weird and scary things go on around here my sister when she was young she was working out in the garden. Well, working, I, she told me she was playing out in the garden. And there was, it was pretty flat. There was no mountains or hills around for a, for a good long ways where their garden is. Cause you know, it has to be out in the open to get good sun. So uh, she's a little girl and she's messing around in the garden when all of a sudden a dirt clod hits her in the back. <clears throat> it's like someone had just threw a dirt clod and she said it hurt really bad. And hit her square in the back of course she stood up and looked around there, there's nobody there's nobody to be seen there's nobody to making a sound or anything so she's kind of spooked she said and she waits there for a little bit to see if somebody's going to move around or come out of hiding from anywhere she realized there was nowhere to hide and she realized she was alone and by herself so she goes running back in to our grandmother and tells her what's happened and our grandmother sets her down and tells her that she must never talk about this or tell anyone at least for 90 days I don't know something to do with the moon the sun I don't I don't know and it may not have been 90 days may have been three months I mean I, I don't I don't know I wasn't born yet but she told her do not talk about this 
They don't talk about this at all to anyone. Of course, my sister questioned your wine. She, she wouldn't. She wouldn't tell. It's just things you don't talk about. They're really weird, really odd and strange things that have happened around here, uh, especially on my side of the family, my mom's side, and all my neighbors and stuff, or her neighbors, I mean, back in the day, would experience all these. Uh, all these weird things going on. And like I say, they called them warnings or omens that something bad was was going to happen. And uh, they usually got it right. They usually got it right. I remember when my grandmother died, the old saying was, if a bird gets in your house, that someone's gonna die. Well, the bird had never got in our house but it just continuously kept flying into the, the picture window of the house. And it, it would not give up. It just kept flying and flying. Finally, the bird broke its neck and, and laid there and died on the porch. And I remember my mother crying and telling me that, you know, uh, my grandmother was going to die. She was already very sick and in the hospital and that that's what this meant. And we were to get prepared and get ready for it that this was going to happen and within 24 hours my grandmother had passed away so there's so many mysterious things about these mountains and the woods and this area and there's there's spots you can go and you feel very at peace you feel very peaceful and then there's other spots you can go that just absolutely make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. That's it's very strange. It's very odd. Now I could tell there's a whole, whole lot more of these things that I could tell you all, these warnings and these stories that had happened over the years and, and the different things that have happened. Um, singing coming from the old graveyard uh, my grandmother used to claim that there was uh, the night time when uh, one of the preachers had got buried that the whole community, not just them, but the whole community in this little town could hear, <clears throat> it was like an organ, the way I was explained to me, an organ or piano coming from this cemetery where they had buried this very liked man, very, very well liked in the community. A uh, pastor had laid him to rest, and uh, they could hear the organ music coming from the from the cemetery. And they actually, when they walked out there, there were several people in the community who had already heard this and was standing there too, in awe. And uh, after just a little bit, it quit. And it was very, very odd, very odd. You know, things like that. Either we don't see them nowadays or we don't hear of them. This place has grown so much and so many of these old mountain ways and stuff and been lost and the trees cut down and stuff like that. It's it's unreal, but the history that we've lost. But someone asked me if I had ever had any experience with a just a straight up paranormal experience. <clears throat> and yes, I will tell you what happened to me once it's a uh, my father got up to take my mother to the uh, to the emergency room again before she lost her legs she kept having reoccurring blood clots in her legs and we would have to go in the middle of the night or you know just whenever so uh, he got her up in the middle of the night and had took her to the uh, to the emergency room and I remember laying there, and I guess it was long about 2 o'clock in the morning, what most people would call sleep paralysis, and hit me. That's what it felt like. I felt like I was being held down onto the couch. I slept in the living room, me and my father did. And like I was being pressed down on the couch. And when I opened my eyes out of the darkness was something even darker it was like a little you might call it a rolling cloud i guess 
but it come down the hallway and it stopped over me. Now I can't move. I mean, I'm trying to scream or do anything I can and I'm not unable to move. And as I'm lying there, I can feel the couch I'm on start vibrating. And it starts vibrating really, really violent and shaking and moving. And then all of a sudden it's like I'm freed. I can move. I let out a scream. I get off that couch and I run down the hallway to my sister's room. And uh, she lets me in. I'm screaming. I'm I'm just absolutely hysterical. And uh, she explains to me, you've <clears throat> you've had sleep paralysis. That's that's all. It's just like a dream. Everything's fine. You're fine. That you know it didn't really happen. So we go back into the living room. <clears throat> And lo and behold, I asked her if it really didn't happen, why is the couch pulled away from the wall out in the middle of the floor in the living room? And instantly, we both got scared. That could not be explained. And she went on to tell me about 15 years later that the same thing had actually happened to her about a month after it happened to me very very strange but I, that that comes to my mind sitting here as we're talking about my mother and stuff that that right there come to my mind and that could have been a warning too that my mother was soon to die i really don't remember the timeline that all this happened within but uh very very weird but i got so much to tell you all and just don't have the time to to come out and sit down and talk to y'all like i'd like to Especially the weather's been bad. Maybe when it gets a little bit better, we all can get together and maybe do a live stream or live chat and talk back and forth or something other. That'd be great. You know, I could build a fire in the backyard or whatever, but uh, I would really love it. And uh, love talking to you all. Love reading your comments. If, if you've had any of these warnings or you've had something like that happen to you in the past, uh, drop me a comment down there and tell me about it or if you know anybody that's had these omens or warnings uh, I'd like to hear about it uh, I've got several more to tell but I guess we'll save that for another video I know sometimes I ramble on and never really get the story told but I'll jump back on here and, and talk to you all here and I'll have some more of these stories and got a couple of more stories to tell I, I put a picture on here a while back that somebody had sent me uh they claimed they were be fought, being followed by uh, a wolf or a coyote up in the mountains and eventually it stood up on two legs and they was supposed to i put a picture of that on there you can you know i don't know if it is or not but it's just what they claim and i've got another picture i want to put on too you have to look real close though to see the man in the picture and i, I don't know if he's a one of these feral man men or dog man i'm not sure what I'm looking at it's not real clear but i'll post that here in a little bit too but y'all i will get back in here and talk to everybody later thank you bye